Refugee Economies represents an attempt to rethink refugee assistance. It starts from the recognition that existing approaches simply aren't working. Around the world, some 10 million of the world's 15 million refugees are in so-called protracted refugee situations. They're often stuck in camps or settlements without the right to work, without the right to move freely, often dependent for many years on end on international assistance. Existing approaches fail to recognise that refugees aren't simply passive victims, but actually have skills, talents and aspirations, and are often frequently involved in very vibrant economic systems. They engage in production, consumption and exchange. They are frequently entrepreneurial and also part of the financial systems. Yet, the economic lives of refugees remain under-researched and poorly understood. We've chosen to focus our research on Uganda as a starting point. We've selected Uganda because it represents a relatively positive case. It's a context in which the government has taken the decision to allow refugees the right to work and a significant degree of freedom of movement. And that's meant that this case represents an example of the boundaries of the possible if refugees are given basic freedoms. This research was conducted in two refugee settlements, Changwali and Nakavali, as well as the capital city of Kampala. In addition to many interviews and focus groups, we also conducted surveys of 1,593 refugees. Throughout our work, we've taken a participatory approach. Our research team was made up of refugees from the communities that we were studying. And this approach not only gave us really valuable and important insights, but also allowed us the opportunity to feed back something to the community through the training. Our research findings in refugee economies are organised around five common myths, five popular assumptions about the economic lives of refugees. First, that refugee economies are isolated. Second, that refugees represent a burden on the host economies. Third, that they're relatively homogenous. Fourth, that refugees are technologically illiterate. And fifth, that they're dependent on international assistance. Our findings challenge and nuance each of these premises. We find that refugees are in fact nationally and transnationally integrated in wider economic systems. That refugees can often contribute positively to the Ugandan economy. That refugees are, rather than homogenous, quite diverse in the range of different income generating strategies they pursue. The refugees are users as well as creators of technology. And lastly, that refugees are by no means uniformly or wholly dependent on international assistance. Instead, our research highlights a range of really interesting findings that are often very counterintuitive. It shows that refugees often aren't dependent on international assistance. And in fact, some 99% in our survey said they had at least some form of independent income generating activity. The research shows that economic lives of refugees are extremely diverse. They don't just engage in the traditional farming activities, but often adopt less traditional forms of economic activity, engaging in transportation, developing cinemas, even running computer games parlours based on recycled equipment. Refugees' economic activities are networked and also part of wider economic systems. Congolese fabric and jewelries are coming from as far as China and India. Even agriculture crops made by refugees are sold and bought across the borders. In other words, refugees' economic lives are globalized. Refugees use technology, including mobile phones and the internet, often at higher levels in Ugandan communities. Crucially, when given the opportunity, refugees show that they can make positive contributions to the national economy. Refugees are employed by and employ Ugandans. They also take part in the exchange of goods and services with Ugandan entrepreneurs. Our research has a wide variety of implications for policy. It highlights the importance of market-based interventions. Rather than assuming that refugees are dependent, we can build on what already exists. If we can understand the complex economic systems of which refugees are a part, then we can potentially improve those markets, but also empower refugees 
to better participate and benefit from those markets. The key to this is helping refugees to help themselves, not seeing refugees as passive victims. While refugees may need assistance, they have capacities as well as vulnerabilities. Intervention should nurture their capacities, for example, through improved education, access to microcredit, business incubation, and increased internet access. Our work focuses on Uganda, but our research has implications for a wide range of contexts, not least of which is the current Syrian crisis. If we can recognize and better understand refugee economies, we can help design approaches that turn humanitarian challenges into sustainable opportunities.